Hey, a uh, quick video here that I'm not going to bother to edit, so sorry about that. I know there are a couple people out there trying to build VTOL ornithopters, so I'm going to go into real quick how this one that I got to fly VTOL works. Uh, I know a couple of people are trying to use rotating wing, wing root mechanisms, and that probably will work. Um, the Like the, the V22 Osprey sort of approach where you rotate the entire thing into a vertical orientation. That probably will work, but I have yet to really get a good four-joint chain to run. It can be done sort of, kind of, uh, since the the hinge that rotates the wing is never under much load. But I, anyway, I haven't gotten it to work real well. It probably is the least obstructive thing you could do to the standard ornithopter's function. Uh, but this approach is different from that. Uh, what I'm doing here is a little bit closer to what dragonflies do, a little bit closer. In I have some of my I have my flap plane distributed backward, so when the wing flaps, it both goes forward and back and up and down, and of course we need the forward and back motion in VTOL and we need the up and down motion in vertical in uh, vertical flight or in forward flight, and we accomplish the difference between them by lowering the flap position way down, or bringing it way up. So since the wing flaps through a full, uh, the flaps both up and down and forward and back, the wings generate thrust in this position, and they generate thrust in this position. Uh, there's a little more going on here than that. Uh, if you look at the hinge mounting, you can see that this is mounted pretty steep. It's actually at about 50 degrees. But the wing incidence is definitely not 50 degrees. I have tilted the wings forward against that another 20 degrees or so. So while the flat plane is way back here, uh, the wing is not angled up that far. I am not sure how important that is. Uh, that's kind of an experimental thing. This has given me the best results so far. Uh, I am not really sure how much it's helping, so I don't have any specifics on that. But uh, it might be something that you want to try. It could even be that it's better to do it in the other direction. I, I, yeah, I don't really know yet. Uh, the other thing that's going on here is I have the wings swept forward and backwards on the forward and back wing, and the purpose of that is to separate the wing tips. Primarily, the purpose is to separate the wing tips. Uh, since a lot of the thrust is generated at the wing tips, uh, I, increase the, I increase the control authority of the controls mixed into the wing trailing edges, which they're all mixed into the trailing edge here, uh, like my older ornithopters, uh, because I couldn't get this to work very well with a leading edge. Uh, so they're all mixed into the uh, into the trailing edges. So separating the wingtips gives you more control authority on pitch and roll and hover. So that's the major reason why they're out there. And I think it might also help with mitigating blade stall, but I don't really know anything about that. That's a film theory. Uh, but it seems to help. Best results so far look like this. Hopefully when I do a more complete video on this, I'll know a lot more about why it works the way it does. Uh, so I will demonstrate this in flight real quick. Uh, in VTOL mode, the wings go all the way down. And we throw in a little bit of power. It'll come up. You have to sit at a little bit of a pitch attitude to prevent it from moving forward, but it's pretty shallow. Uh, and this is apparently true of dragonflies, too. I hadn't done a lot of reading on this until I started working on this, but I guess they actually sit really steep while they're flying backwards, like 50 or 60 degrees. Uh, but, yeah, I haven't Again, ask uh, ask a Frank because I have barely done any reading on that. So uh, to transition, the wings come forward the same way they do on the other ornithopters. Uh, but rather than just going to the neutral position, which is where they are now, they start to go flat. They go negative, which is now where they are. And at about negative forty five degrees, we have eh, yeah uh, we have forward flight, which looks like this. And then they can come right back to being vertical. And we have vertical flight. Uh, as you might guess, uh, the control ranges for this change a lot as it's transitioning in and out of vertical flight, which is why I haven't really gotten it to not be an experimental aircraft. Like right now, I have decent roll control but I have no real yaw control. Uh, my yaw is mixed into the amplitude of these hinges like it is on the other ornithopter, and because I'm in pure VTOL flight, that basically just turns into roll control. And yet my actual roll control mixed into the wing trailing edges, that also provides roll control. 
So it is difficult to yaw. In order to yaw it, you have to accelerate it a little bit, and then the yaw control starts working as yaw control. It still has a big roll component, uh, but you just balance it out with the actual aileron, and then you can kind of yaw the aircraft. It's it's not easy. Uh, and as you transition into horizontal flight, uh, the neutral position is one of the worst. Like right now, I have only yaw control. This is now my roll control is providing this motion, and my yaw control is also providing this motion, which is not terrific. Uh, and there's basically nothing you can do about it in neutral flight. It's just not going to roll. Uh, as you shallow it out further, it starts to roll. Uh, it's got a ton of adverse yaw, which you would expect, uh, but you can start to work against it by using the actual yaw control, which now works as you would expect. And then around here, things start to work the way they're supposed to. Uh, this would be a very easy cross control to solve if I could just do math to solve the problem, but I can't, so I'm going to have to come up with a more creative solution. Uh, I will get into that real quick. Uh, this is the manual version of the controls, which I pulled out so that I could show you the wing position, or the uh, just the wing positioning, how it works in real time. This is the automated version, which has those controls mixed into airspeed, uh, Z and Y. Uh, basically, as the aircraft goes faster, I start to shallow the wings out, and if you start to slide down, the wings start to increase in incidence, and if you start to slide up, the wings start to decrease in incidence into negative numbers. Uh, that just helps dampen out. It, it, it's more consistent control at different airspeeds than just basing it purely on forward speed. And because this is changing dynamically, I honestly, I, like, I have no way of seeing exactly what values everything ends up at after the math is done. But the effect is that the aircraft is a little bit more controllable in general. Uh, not really sure what's going on there. I can't see the results after the math. My guess is it's just spending very little time in the positions where the wing is very difficult to control, like exactly at the zero flat position. This is a fair bit easier to hold in a perfectly vertical or backwards flight like this. And as it starts to come forward, and my maximum amplitude here is at about 75% where the wings will fragment themselves. Well, uh, deal with that later. Or not at all. Uh, so now the wings have come forward close to their neutral position, but they've gone a little bit past it already, and I already have some roll control, so that's a little bit easier. And as we accelerate through 90 knots, it starts to behave like an airplane. So that's the story there. I uh, throttle back down, and it will come into a nice VTOL rest. I am quite happy with this auto transform, especially since I can't use the trick that I'm using on the last ornithopter where I'm using the airspeed to jam the wings up against a limiter. Uh, I can't do that here because I need to have control authority even when the aircraft is in full forward flight. Uh, that's the other point of having the vertical speed mixed in. Uh, basically, if it was just if it was just forward speed, then not only would the forward speed shallow the controls out, it would jam them all the way to the negative eventually, and the forward speed of the aircraft would be artificially capped by the fact that you would have to pitch up to deal with that. Uh, so mixing in the vertical speed helps mix that out and deal with the fact that I can't do math and uh, like have a clamp in there or something. Uh, so that's the other point of that. Uh, anyway, I think that just about covers this thing as it stands right now, and just how I'm doing VTOL ornithopters. I, I like this approach because it is similar to, it is more similar to the Dragonfly approach than rotating the entire wing route. Uh, and, uh, I don't know, it's just more interesting to me. And it's definitely the path of least resistance in terms of joint strength. Uh, it's probably not the path of least resistance in terms of controllability and in terms of top speed because you are wasting some power in having the wing distributed forward and back as well as up and down. Uh, anyway, hopefully I can come up with a good way to make this reasonably easy to control in the near future. Uh, for the time being, uh, have fun trying to build these things. I am. Uh, we're all on this adventure together.